sat down to, you know, film this video, realized I forgot to put makeup on, so, uh, BRB. Much better. Okay, so today we are doing my haul and wrap-up for July 2015. This is a pile of books. You can see it. It's on the floor. I'm sitting on the floor. It's a large pile. These are not the books I've read. These are the books that I got or received or bought in the month of July. So, because of this, we're gonna just get right on into it because it's a large thing. And I've also read quite a bit of books this month. That, that pile, you can't quite see. So, let's do this. get into this. So I did buy The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I have heard great things about this book. I bought it while I was at VidCon. It's one of Emma's favorite books. I'm excited to read it. The next book I bought most recently was The Treatment by Suzanne Young, which <laughs> ties into a book later because this is a sequel. Can you guess what's coming? I did recently read the program which I'll get into in a minute and I wanted the sequel. The next few books I did get from VidCon. We did a book swap at VidCon. If you haven't watched all my vlogs and stuff you can check those out down below. I'll link the playlist of VidCon down below. The first few ones are ARCs. So I got Cut Both Ways by Carrie Mizrobian and this comes out September of 2015 so next month. It's about a love triangle and one of the boys is bisexual. I know that the main character is not very likable because he is cheating on his girlfriend with a boy. I'm very interested to read this. This is probably going to be read this month. Hopefully if I can get into it before school starts. A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis and this comes out October of this year. Grace May knows madness. She keeps it locked away along with her voice trapped deep inside a brilliant mind that cannot forget horrific family secrets. Those secrets along with the bulge in her belly land her in the Boston insane asylum. When her voice returns in a burst of violence, Grace is banished to the dark cellars where her mind is discovered by a visiting doctor who dabbles in the new study of criminal psychology. With her keen eyes and sharp memory, Grace will make the perfect assistant at crime scenes. Escaping from Boston to the safety of an ethical Ohio asylum, Grace finds friendship and hope hints of a life she should have had. But gruesome nights bring Grace and the doctor into the circle of the killer who stalks young women, continuing to operate under the cloak of madness. Grace must hunt a murderer while she confronts the demons in her own past. This beautifully twisted historical thriller explores the fine line between sanity and insanity, good and evil, and the madness that ex exists in all of us. Oh, it sounds so good. I want to read it right now. So the next arc that I have is 99 Days by Katie Katug Katugno. The cover is not final, so this might not be what it looks like. And this com came out in April of this year, so it is already out. It's a contemporary boy meets girl. Doesn't start out as a very good thing. She starts out by egging his house. So, this one I also got at the book swap and I just picked it up because at the end of the book swap there were still books on the, that they had all the books on and they basically said if you want another one pick up and don't leave any of them here so pick up whatever you want. So I decided to pick this up, it's called Guilty Pleasures by Lauren K. Hamilton. So Anita Blake is the vampire uh, killer, hunter, it says I don't date vampires, I kill them. So if you're looking for a vampire book that isn't happy, maybe this is a good choice. Hopefully she doesn't end up falling in love with a vampire because if that happens, I'm going to be really upset. This next book is Delirium by Lauren Oliver and this was a book that Sierra brought for the book swap and then decided she didn't want to carry it around in her backpack, so she gave it to me because I asked for it. I've heard good things about Delirium. Lauren Oliver is one of those authors that like has really mixed reviews on a lot of her books, so I've never bought one of her books, but now I have one, so maybe I will read it. A little sneak peek for a book that goes on sale March 1st, 2016. And and it's called The Lifeboat Click by Kathy Parks. Mean Girls Meets Life of Pi. That sounds terrifying. These books I also bought while I was at VidCon, but I bought them at Barnes & Noble. The Testing by Joelle Charbonneau. <laughs> and Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. This is the book that Emma raves about at all times of the day on her channel, and so basically all of the Bibliothon girls that were there we miss you, Brittany. Bought it because she was just raving about it, so I bought that. I bought at the last bookstore went in LA um, on the last day of our trip. Uh, Unwind by Neil Schusterman, which is sounds really creepy. Look at the... Uh, uh, the Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I've read a few things by Neil Gaiman. I absolutely love his writing. It's very surreal, like magical realism kind of, and it's creepy and it's cool and I like it and... 
Yeah. Also bought the program by Suzanne Young at some point, but I do not have it with me because I lent it to my friend Kelsey, who has a channel here on the YouTubes. We'll talk more about that when I get into the wrap up. I am an anthropology major and a linguistics minor, and so I'm taking a lot of ethnographic classes and a lot of classes that has to do with cultures and stuff like that. Ethnography is the written version of studying a culture, so a lot of these are ethnographies. This one has a sticker on it. It's going to irritate me while I do this video. So the first book I have here is Nan, The Life of an Irish Traveling Woman by Sharon Gmelch. And there's a sticker on it and I'm mad about it. The Forest People by Colin M. Turnbull about the Bamudi Pygmies. There's photos in it. So we will be reading this Ooh, for classes. Explaining English Grammar by George Yule. Linguistics is not the same as English. We do not study English the way you did in school with like how to pronounce things. It's more about the differences between how an American pronounces English versus a British person pronounces English. Or the differences between a New York American pronounces English versus a Californian pronounces English. Or the different words that they use uh, to describe the same definitive thing that is existing. What word do they use to describe that? So I'm not exactly sure what this class is going to entail, but it obviously is about English grammar. Village on the Edge, Changing Times in Papua New Guinea by Michael French Smith. This is another ethnography. Intercultural Communication, a text with reading by Pamela J. Cooper, Carolyn Calloway Thomas, and Sherry J. Simmons. It provides a narrative approach to help students understand both the depth and breadth of intercultural communication. So intercultural communication is exactly what it sounds like, communication between cultures. Because like I said, cultures describe things differently. Cultures also have different ideals and important things to them. Some things are more important in certain cultures than others. And so when you're talking to each other and you're from different cultures, you might think that you're being rude to each other, but really you're just not realizing that that culture doesn't think what they're saying is being rude. Human Evolution Workbook by Marcus Youngow, which is my professor. I have a feeling that this is going to be things that we fill out um, to help us study human evolution. This is the black skull um, on this. I love the black skull. It's just a... It's one of the beings that came in between Homo erectus and Homo sapien. Homo sapien is us. Homo erectus is the first upright being. Understanding Human Evolution 5th Edition, and this is our textbook for that same class, so it's going to be about human evolution. The Cambridge Dictionary of Human Biology and Evolution, so this is going to, it's literally a dictionary. The Human Strategy and Evolutionary Perspective on Human Anatomy by John H. Langdon. Two more books before we get into my reading wrap-up. So, I did buy this beautiful beautiful cover from Barnes & Noble. It's Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. It's like their fancy editions. It's got silver covers. Uh, look at that. Oh, and it has a ribbon. This one was six dollars because it was on sale because they changed the coloring of this red. It's now a brighter red. So if you go to Barnes & Noble, it's only twelve dollars to buy this, guys. Like, it... <sighs> It's so pretty, but mine was $6 because I bought the darker red instead of the brighter red. I don't know if they still have those, but it was in the like on sale section. If you check that out, they might have it. And, ha, oh, so pretty. And then I also bought the Complete Sherlock Holmes Volume 2 by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Ridge Edges. On to my reading wrap-up. So, first book I read in the month of July was the One by Kira Cass. I do have an entire selection series review up on my channel, so I will link that down below as well. And this was very good. It was a great ending to a series. I also read After the One, which is just a little short story that comes in the box set. I love how, like, floppy the books are. Five out of five stars. Suck it was the program by Suzanne Young, which I do not have with me, like I said, but here's a picture of it. And I gave this a full 5 out of 5 stars. I also have a review of this up on my channel. It is spoiler free if you want to check it out. Just wonderful. It was fantastic. It was beautiful. I went on a library spree. 
and I got a lot of books from the library. I also went on a graphic novel spree, so most of them coming are graphic novels. Picked up The Walking Dead Volume 1. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. If you watch the TV show, this is basically the TV show in comic book. Later on in the series, it does get a little bit more different, but especially this first volume, it's like exactly exactly the same so i wish that the graphic novel was in color like this is beautiful well that's creepy but it's the colors are cool and it's just black and white why 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 you gotta do that four out of five stars for that city of lost souls by cassandra claire this is the fifth book in the mortal instruments series i gave it a five out of five stars it was so so good I've, I've never read the mortal instruments before so this is my first experience reading the mortal instruments and it's really good this is the walking dead volume two robert cook kirkman charlie Al adlard and cliff rathburn so i picked up the second volume. Once again, it was very good. Four out of five stars. My big complaint is once again that it's black and white. The next book I finished was actually what I was listening to for the basically entire month. The Martian by Andy Weir. This is the cover. It's coming out as a movie adaptation very, very soon. I think this year, maybe September or October. Um, but don't watch the preview if you haven't read the book because it spoils things. Three out of five stars. Even though it was really, really entertaining, I did find that there was a lot, a lot, a lot of science talk throughout it. And I was just like, why do I need to know like all of the intricate details of this plus this equals explosion? If I had been reading it, I probably would have skipped through a lot of that but I was listening to it so I couldn't easily skip through things. It still was really, really entertaining and it really was thrilling and so I'm excited to go see the movie because I'm hoping that they condense those science-y parts. The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. This is the five novella, prequel novellas from the Throne of Glass series. I read this after Crown of Midnight and I'm very glad that I did read it before Throne of Glass because the things that happened in Throne of Glass really made a lot more sense after knowing the prequel. Five out of five stars. I love Sarah J Mass's writing. I can't wait to pick up A Court of Thrones and Roses. I need Queen of Shadows in my life right now because I just finished Air of Fire, which will be in my August wrap up. <sighs> the Wicked and the Divine, Kieran, Gillen, McKelvey, Wilson, and Cowles. Those are the last names. The art in this. Guys, volume one. <sighs> four out of five stars because I do have to say that the story was really confusing. I didn't understand a lot of what was happening throughout the four. This is the first four volumes, I think. They didn't really explain who the gods were that are in the story. Some of them were more obvious than others, but the ones that weren't obvious, I did not know who they were, so I did not know like what I was expecting from them or anything like that. The Walking Dead book two, which is numbers three through six? or three through seven, find it, whatever. It's the next three or something of The Walking Dead, once again, by the same authors. I gave this an entire four out of five stars. This series seems to be a four out of five stars for me. Once again, only complaint is that it's in black and white. Why are they not in color? So I can see that blood and guts. Everyone talks about how gory these are and I'm just like, well, it's in black and white, so. The last book I read in the month of July was once again another graphic novel and I read Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin volume 1 which I did not realize there were multiple volumes per book like Game of Thrones blah 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 I thought it was like Game of Thrones and then I think Storm of Swords is next so there's a lot more graphic novels than I thought there were so I don't know if I'm going to be continuing on with this but the art is really really cool I really enjoyed it. This was a four out of five stars for me though. It was really well done. It basically is, you know, the same story of Game of Thrones. It didn't seem to lose too much in it. And then I went to VidCon and I did not read for the rest of the month. I finished this. Oh, I guess I finished this on July 30th. 11 books. Wow. That's pretty good. That's, that's really good. I'm gonna give myself a thumbs up for that. So, let's do this. All right. Okay, we're getting there. Oh yeah, you can do this. Oh, that's a whole book. That's not even a reading book. Oh, this is it. I did it. So these are the books I read in the month of July. I almost said May. We are not in May. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure to comment down below what you read this month and pick your favorite and your least favorite thing that you read this month. And tell me in the comments down below. Sorry that this is late and sorry it was a billion years long. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time with a new video. July favorites are coming. 
Uh, make sure to check out my VidCon playlist down below and all of my reviews and stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Oh, God. I just need to do a thumbnail. It's not that hard, right? Right? Ah. They're not even anymore, and I wanted them to be even. Come on, there we go. Okay. Let's put this on top. Okay. There we go. I don't even want to attempt to do that, but I kind of want to do it for you guys with bloopers. I mean, wouldn't it be funny if I attempted to pick up all these whole books? I'm doing it. Fuck it. Okay. Okay. Got some of these on here. Some of these ones. I did not do this in the correct order, let me tell you, because I should have put the big books on the bottom. that I bought in July. I did it. I did it. And they're so scared. And they're heavy. Oh, it's a good thing I'm sitting down because now they're just hanging out on my thigh. Okay. I did it. For y'all. Thank y'all. You're welcome.